Welcome, welcome to the free online pageant workshop. For this topic, we are going to be discussing how to get high paying pageant sponsors. Now, who does not want high paying pageant sponsors? I don't know anyone, especially when your pageant sponsors are just in love with you. I mean, when we get the right pageant sponsors, those are the ones that are going to just be awesome cheerleaders for you. So I want to just briefly talk about what we're going to cover today. First, you're going to learn the biggest mistake that girls make when searching for their sponsors. So I really want to get that out in the open and learn how we can avoid it, of course. So step number two here that we're going to learn is the seven steps to high pain sponsors. So this is what you can actually do to get those high paying sponsors. And I'm going to give you examples of what I've done as well. And then number three, finally, at the end, I'm going to give you an opportunity to join us for the pageant sponsor success formula. And I will be explaining that more to you as we go through the workshop as well. So before we begin, I want to really just get you focused. So please turn off your cell phone, close any other windows that you have open on your computer or wherever you're watching this from. And I recommend that you get a notebook and a pen handy because I am going to be delivering so much information both in talking points, so the actual content, and then also just from my experience, you know, oftentimes if something hits me, I'm like, oh, I need to make sure I talk about this too. So I will be sharing with you tons and tons of information. So get ready. First, I would like you to, after you've got all those things together, go ahead and set them down. And then just for a moment, close your eyes. And I want you to just imagine what it would feel like if for your next pageant, you were ready to walk in on pageant day and it's sh almost showtime, you've got a couple of hours behind the scenes to get ready, you walk into the dressing room and you're one of the first that are there because you're feeling really confident, you've got lots of extra time today. So you kind of walk in and find the best place in the dressing room for you. You get to choose your mirror and choose where you hang your wardrobe. And as you're unzipping and getting your wardrobe prepared and things, you're just looking at it thinking, wow, I am so lucky that I get to have my dream wardrobe for this pageant. You know, you might be thinking, oh, never before was I able to have really everything that I needed and wanted for this pageant experience. And you're feeling so super confident. And as you're getting ready, you barely have any tweaks to make. So you're kind of taking selfies of yourself and posting them all over social media and texting your friends in the audience. Well, everybody else is worried about last minute things or whoops, their eyelash came off. And so they're putting the things back together. They're putting final curls and touches in their hair, but you were able to afford the makeup artist. So you don't have to be worrying about those types of things. So you're just kind of hanging out, enjoying life, getting to know the girls and things like that. And so you open up the program booklet that's sitting there and it's always so much fun to flip to your page. So you flip to the pages that you are on and you're noticing that actually you're on a lot of these pages and you flip and flip again and there you are again and the ads look awesome and you just feel like a celebrity in these program books. Like really you are the star of the program booklet and what a cool feeling that is to just be able to experience that and say, wow, I'm all through this thing, all different looks and different, you know, full close shots and full body shots and with all these different sponsors that you've been working with. And then you get somebody runs backstage and hands you a rose with a little note on it. And you're like, wow, goodness, who would have sent this? What's this from? And so you open it up and here it is a thank you card from your sponsors who are sitting there in the audience. And they say, thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that you have done for us. We can't wait to see you shine on stage. And uh, just the awesome feeling that that is to just know that they are waiting out there for you. And so as you get ready and you're entering stage for the first time for your opening number, the music starts, the curtains come up, and you hear a huge shout with your name on it. And for the first time ever, you have this incredible audience. And you know it's because of all those sponsors that have helped you to get to where you are. Well, get ready 
because I am absolutely on a mission to help you discover what you have to offer the world. I want to help you to develop meaningful partnerships with sponsors that can help you pay for your pageant. And of course, I really want to help you win your pageant. So this is what it's all about today. And I am going to share with you how I got one sponsor to give me $3,000 for my pageant. And you can too. And that is what this is all about. I want to share that with you. So I want to start with sharing with you my journey. And of course, I'm going to be uncovering some lessons here for you. So pay attention, listen carefully. This would be a great time to get your pen and pad handy um, because I've got a lot of experience, over 10 years of pageant experience and have learned a lot, made a lot of mistakes along the way. So I really want to share that with you today. So let's jump in. My very first pageant was when I was about 18 my sister and I were very close. She was just a year ahead of me in school. And she had just graduated. And of course, I was devastated because she was my best friend. And I had done everything that she did. I did it too. She was a cheerleader. I was a cheerleader. She was a dancer. I was a dancer. She played the viola. I played the viola. You know, every little step of the way, I just wanted to, I just admired her so much. And I just wanted to walk in her footsteps. Well, when she graduated, I was entering my senior year of high school and I was really like, wow, this is an amazing opportunity for me to really dive into something that I want to do, like to figure out what makes me unique and what, what is it that I want to spend my life doing. And so I actually made a bucket list and one of the things on the bucket list was to compete in a pageant. And it was the oddest, I, I still have no idea why, where that even came from, but because I never knew anyone who competed in a pageant. My parents weren't pushing the issue. I was 18, so it wasn't like I was a kid, you know? Like, it was just an interesting experience to think, oh, that's what I want to do. And so I found a pageant in my area that had $0 entry fee because, you know, I wasn't even planning on winning the thing and uh, competed in the pageant. And it was to the point where I, I just needed to check it off my list. I had competed. I really didn't even care if I won. So I did crazy things. I even rewore my prom dress from my junior year, the year before, because it was whatever is a fancy dress. And it was something I thought, well, this might work, you know, so I rewore it. No big deal. Um, and then the needless to say, I did not win. I mean, I, I'd like to think I had some success in pageantry, but it did not start that young. So this pageant, I really had a really amazing time and am actually glad that I didn't win because I was truly not prepared for it. So the judges made a wise choice there. Then several years later, I competed in another pageant. And this time, my goal was I really wanted to dance for thousands of people. I was a dancer and, you know, grew up dancing, studio dancer since age three. And I'd some, taught some courses and choreographed for other girls competing and stuff and really just wanted to. By now I was in college, so I was 20 years old or so and wasn't really getting out of it what I wanted as a dancer. And so I thought, well, if I could have the opportunity to perform like in a pageant, I could be able to dance in front of thousands. And there was a pageant in my area, Miss Crawford County. It was a Miss America local in Pennsylvania. And I thought, well, if I could compete in that pageant, I don't need to win the thing, you know, and it's free to enter the pageant because the Miss America locals were always free. So I thought that's what I'm going to do. And I did. And in order to make it work, because pageants can add up, I ended up borrowing wardrobe from friends. So I found my fanciest friends and borrowed all their wardrobe, you know. And I thought, well, I don't really care to win. I just really want to dance. Well, the rehearsals for this pageant were about two weeks long. And after the beginning of the second week, about five days before the actual pageant, I decided that I actually wanted to win. And that's not the time to really decide that you want to win the pageant because it had already, we'd gone so far. Like I had this really amazing dance because that's what I was putting all my efforts into. But I mean, I borrowed my wardrobe. I really didn't know what I was doing. And I always say that it's a miracle from God. Like he definitely wanted me to go this route. It is an absolute miracle that I actually won the title. And with it came in-kind scholarships. So things that people were giving as gifts. And then also two thousand dollars. This is a pageant that had a zero dollar entry fee and I won two thousand dollars. And I say that it's a miracle because here's a picture of me in the crown here after having won. This is years ago, you know, like really 10 years ago when I won the thing. And 
it's interesting because like I'm wearing, look at my earrings there. You can barely tell I'm wearing earrings. I'm wearing a necklace, which I would never recommend to pageant girls to wear necklaces now. It's like not in, it wasn't in then. There's my lovely dress. It's a borrowed prom dress. It's like a ball gown from a girlfriend of mine who lived nearby who I went to college with. And so it's just an interesting story that finally I actually won this thing and won some money for it sort of by accident. So now I had a new goal. My new goal now with scholarships. I was like, wow, it's free to enter these things. And you can make money on it. And it's this easy, you know? So I thought, well, heck, let's go for it. So I ended up continuing to compete for many years with that goal in mind. I was able to choose the pageants that gave the highest amount of scholarships. And I did all of that I possibly could to actually win the thing. So I was researching other pageant contestants and really like setting myself above. I knew that at the time talent was heavily weighed. So I had a great talent. So I, I really put efforts into that. And I ended up winning $12,000, which paid for my master's degree. And it was over a course of many, many years. And I also got wardrobe from sponsors and in-kind gifts, things that I would be able to continue to use in my pageantry. So every time I competed, I was getting better and better and better. And this was, again, in my early 20s. Then I started to realize, wow, this is an amazing opportunity. I mean, I don't know why this I, it was really because I wasn't getting much guidance up to this point, but I realized with the right training, I could really impact lives if I knew what I was doing here, you know, and lives all over the world, actually. So that became my new goal was how can I reach people everywhere? Like that was really what I was after. So I set the goal of creating a healthier and happier nation. That was my initial goal. And I knew all I had to do was win. If I was able to win that pageant, whether it was the local, the state, I really wanted to win Miss America. If I could just win that title, ah, oh, I would be able to impact so many people. And then disaster struck. And for those of you who have competed in Miss America or pageants like it, you know, when you turn a certain age, you age out. And so there I was, I am like 25 years old, aged out. You can only compete in Miss America up to age 24. And that's an awesome pageant because of the fact that there is no entry fee. There's no entry fee. And it's just unbelievable, you know? And so here I am, it's like, I'm 25 years old, now what? So all of a sudden, washed up at 25, what I'm discovering now is that all of the pageants I wanna compete in they cost like a thousand dollars to enter. The Miss USA pageant cost a ton of money. The Miss International pageant cost all this money, and and I'm not saying that it's a ton of money now. I realize you know I have a completely different perspective, but at the time I thought, you know, I went from paying nothing to enter these pageants and borrowing all my wardrobe to now all of a sudden I really needed to make an investment. And the worst part was that I had no clue how to get sponsors and I had no crown. So like, what am I supposed to even promise them? If I don't even have a title yet, what was I supposed to do? So you can imagine how this feels. In fact, many of you probably feel this way even now that you just have this sense of like, oh man, what am I supposed to do? I still wanted to win. So I wanted to compete in the Miss USA pageant. And so I was able to put in $1,000 for the entry fee. I bought a $1,000 gown. I also had to pay for wardrobe and accessories and travel. And I just needed to cut costs everywhere because it was really getting expensive. And I knew that I had to put in the expenses in order to win. So I was trying my best. You know, I thought, okay, well, what do they, what do they really need? Do I need this other thing? Do I need this? Can I cut this? Can I cut this? Can I cut this? I mean, I was cutting everything. I actually cut hair and makeup out of the deal altogether. I was like, whatever, I'll just do my own, you know? And I still ended up spending about $4,000, maybe even a little bit more just with incidentals. And I didn't win. That was a disappointing moment because I dumped in all this money and I didn't win. So I'm like, oh, well, okay, let me try again. So I had then aged out of the Miss USA pageant. So I went for the Miss California International. This was when after I'd already moved to California. And again, a $1,000 entry fee plus $500 to pay for the wardrobe that, that was mandated, plus additional wardrobe, all the accessories, all the travel, a tan, because now I'm in California. I got to make sure I get that tan. And I'm still cutting costs everywhere. I ended up spending about $3,000 on this pageant maybe a little bit more. And again, I did not win. And by now, you know, it was really hurting. I'm living in Los Angeles, which is a super expensive city. I was working two jobs to support myself because my parents weren't helping. I had school loans to pay off. 
all of this stuff was really adding up. And of course, I was also like wanting to spend time with friends and wanting to buy new things. I mean, I just moved into a new apartment. I wanted to furnish my apartment. And it was getting to a place where I was like, wow, this is really starting to add up, you know, but I had this big vision for what I wanted to do for the pageant. And yet every time I competed, it felt like I was just losing money. Like it was being wasted. You know, I'm spending all this money to compete in the pageant and then I don't win. And so whoop de doo what's all that for? I was putting a lot of time into it, time that I could have spent getting, you know, a third job potentially. Uh, I was losing time putting into it. And then I thought at the end, I'm like, oh, I have no crown. So what's the point? And I was really losing confidence in myself because I had no title, no crown. And so I'm like, wow, I'm, I'm putting in all this effort. All I want to do is change the world. How come this isn't working for me? So the biggest thing that happened for me was I discovered that in that moment, I really needed to make a decision. You know, something needed to shift, something needed to happen for me. And so that was my moment where I said, I have a choice. I either need to just give up on pageants because they're really expensive. And so if I just keep doing this, then I'm not gonna be able to afford them, you know? And so I, I could just give up on it altogether and like save my thousands every year. Or I could get sly and keep cutting costs, like every pageant I could compete, I could just keep rewearing wardrobe or keep borrowing things here and there or just keep getting less and less coaching or just keep getting less and less assistance and just keep getting less and less hair and makeup or whatever, you know, keep cutting costs. But then I knew for sure I would just keep losing because I wasn't putting in the investment, you know. And so then my third option was that I knew I could just take control and start investing in the right things for my success. And I thought, I know my ultimate goal is to impact people. What if I were to start investing in that? So I started to shift my focus from the short term to the long term. And I said, okay, in the end, like let's say I win the pageant one year later, five years later, 12 years later, what is it gonna look like? And so I finally committed to that big picture. And then I started investing in something that would pay off whether or not I won. So now I was like on a mission to just collect skills. Like I thought if I can just understand who I am, that would be a, a huge feat. You know, if I could just figure out what is it that I have to offer people, if I could just figure out what is it that I want to do with my career, with my passions, how can I blend all these things together? And then how can I invest in that so that after the pageant, it really pays off. So the biggest change that I made was that I started to put my money where I could benefit the most. And then I looked for sponsors to pay for the things that they could benefit from the most. That was the biggest, write that down. That's the absolute biggest change I made is, okay, where can I benefit most? Like buying a fancy, you know, $3,000 dress, could that really benefit me the most? Well, probably not, you know, not after the pageant anyway. So here's exactly what I did. This would be a good time to write this stuff down. I went to work. First of all, it does take work. So I created a budget and I did not budget what the money, what, what money I had. Instead, I budgeted what the money is that I needed. So I made a list of all the things I would need. Okay, well, here's what I'm going to need for wardrobe. Here's what I'm going to need for entry fee. Here's what I'm going to need for this and this and this. I made a big list. And then I reorganized it. So I just, you know, did this on Word document and then I slid it up, copied and pasted it to the things that were organized at the top that would teach me something, really anything. Like I just wanted to learn stuff. I knew that if I could learn something, then I would be able to have so much more power after the pageant because I could apply it to everything else. And education is truly a value of mine. You will see that. Um, and especially in this workshop that I'm doing for you, I just want to educate. I want to teach people something that they can apply across all areas of life. Like there's so, so, so much value to using your pageant experience to apply these things to the rest of your life. So then that is when I created this seven step strategy to get sponsors. I applied everything that I knew about business, everything that I knew about other pageants, the pageants themselves, the people who produce the pageants, directors and stuff, what they did to get sponsors. One of my best friends was a pageant director. So I was able to mastermind with her and say, what did you do and how can we do this? I talked with salespeople who work with major sponsors across all companies. I mean, I was really getting the scoop from everybody and thought, okay, how can I just apply these methods to what it is I need, which is sponsors. I'd heard about girls getting sponsors all the time. I just didn't know how they were doing it. So I went to work 
And in one week, I mean, I, I worked and I did it fast and I created a whole system for this. And in one week, I got, I had huge success, $3,000 from one sponsor, one company that gave me $3,000. And then three months later, I actually won the title of Miss California. Oh, and it was like, it, you would have thought that I won Miss International. Like it was an incredible experience. This pageant, I had put so much work into, so much effort in, and I'm not saying so much money into, it was just a lot of work. I was smart. I definitely invested for sure, but I was wise about where I put my money. I put my investment in places that could teach me something new. And that is what landed me the sponsors. And then the sponsors were able to benefit from my work. So then winning Miss California and then of course having all of these this knowledge about what I needed to do next and how to prioritize and things that led to oh oh first I want to tell you about this. This is my girlfriend Rachel. Rachel was Miss Pennsylvania. She held the title the year before I was Miss California. And so you see there we're wearing the same dress. The awesome part of giving in pageantry and having pageant sisters and having these this family is that you can share stuff. And so Rachel, I was able to lend her my dress for her title. She was giving up her title and she wore the same dress. Doesn't it look great on her? And like, what an awesome opportunity. I mean, sometimes, you know, you buy these dresses, what are you going to do with them again? And it was awesome. And Rachel was so pivotal, pivotal in my experience because she was able to sew into me as well. She lent me so, so many things, almost her entire wardrobe. So it is just awesome to have pageant sisters like this in your community. You know, California and Pennsylvania are, you know, millions of states away, it feels like 3,000 miles, you know, and yet we were still able to bond and keep that bond through pageantry. So awesome experience. And then that led to me being second runner up at Miss International, the national pageant, and I won an award for fun fashion. Here's a picture of me in fun fashion. And what I love about this is that this picture, you know, they say a picture says a thousand words. To me, this picture of me on the left, I had the best of the best photographer. Tess Johnson is just absolutely amazing. She's so easy to work with. She's such a doll. She gets photos to you like in days, you know, absolutely amazing. And not just one photo or two photos. She gives you a ton of photos. She's absolutely an amazing woman. She does hair and makeup right on set. She edits all your photos for you. This is just absolutely an incredible experience I had with her. And then this image on the right there, my hair and makeup is done by Austin Ride on pageant day, which was sponsored for me. Thank goodness for my generous, generous directors. They were just absolutely wonderful. And this is an outfit that I borrowed from my friend, Rachel. Those shoes were sponsored. I mean, it was just an unbelievable experience. The earrings were, were also a gift. I mean, all of this stuff is just when you are plugged into the right community, you've got access to so many different opportunities. And that is truly what led to my pageant success was having the right people knowing that, I, I mean, this isn't about me taking, it's about me giving. What can I give in order to get these things in return? So I'm going to just take a brief moment. I'm going to click to the next slide and then take a quick sip of water. So how did I get this high paying pageant sponsor? I told you that I got one sponsor to pay me $3,000. How did that come about? Well, I'm going to share with you the seven steps that I use to get high paying pageant sponsors because pageant sponsors truly changed my full pageant experience. I mean, everything shifted when I had sponsors. And the reason is because first of all, I realized the value in investing in myself. And investing in myself is what led me to be able to offer so much to all of these other people that supported me. And secondly, I was able to get proper preparation. Instead of cutting corners here and there and like, well, let's just do this instead of what I know I should do. You know, like how often have you said, well, I know I really ought to do that, but I'm going to do this instead. You know, I really ought to hire the pageant makeup artist, but I'm going to just do this instead. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I drove myself crazy, like driving all around cutting costs. And I really wish I wouldn't have done that because I probably would have had much better success. And finally, 
I had that proper preparation through knowledge, getting the right knowledge of what is the proper preparation, like what did I really need? And then also through sponsorships. So it was an incredible experience how it just totally changed for me. Now I wanna share with you what my biggest mistake was prior to this full understanding. I realized that I was waiting to get the crown in order to invest. I thought, well, if I could just get this crown, then I'll make the investment. And what I found was that they were waiting for me to invest in order to give me the crown. And you can imagine what that would be like from a judge's perspective if you have a group of women who are not doing much, they're not investing, maybe they're investing time, but they're not really learning anything new and they just want to get the title and then they say things like, well, yes, as soon as I win, then I will. Well, once I win, then I will. And if I were to win, then, you know, and it's like, that is not what a judge wants to hear. That's not what a pageant director wants to hear, frankly. They want to know you're already committed to the industry. They want to know that you have already put into, sewed into yourself by committing to the to pageantry, really, you know, and by investing in advance, now they're saying, okay, now she's worthy of the title because she's paid her dues. She's been here. She's got all of the understanding, all of the knowledge that she needs. She knows what is, what's up from down in the pageant industry, you know, and it takes a lot of experience to do that, or it takes a lot of proper coaching, you know, to get there. So when, as soon as I flipped that switch and I started to invest in me, and in, in my skills and what I was able to bring to the table, now all of a sudden, I became a really, really valuable candidate and someone who was worth a lot and prepared to win the pageant. So I want to ask you, this is a little invest in yourself test. So this is to help you understand how much you feel like you are really worth. How much would you invest if I told you I could help you to get even just one sponsor for $3,000 to sponsor your pageant. What would that be worth to you? Like, what would you be willing to invest in that? Maybe time, resources, type it in the chat box there. What would be the thing for you? What would you be able to invest as far as time, money, um, maybe even the resources that you already have, maybe even the contacts that you already have, things like that. Type it in the chat box, what would you invest? And as you're typing that, I want to share with you that the higher the number that you put here, the higher you believe you are really, truly worth. And when you value yourself at an extremely high level, when you put a high value on who you are, other people put a high value on who you are. So when you start start to realize, wow, you know what, I have an education or I have experience or I'm able to balance a variety of different things or here are my skills. These are the strengths that I have. Here's all the stuff that I could just create a huge laundry list of all these things I know I can contribute. All of a sudden you realize, wow, I am super valuable. And when you can communicate that to people, they realize it too. So it's incredible how, how just that investment in yourself, knowing what you would give is just a game changer. Totally. So I want to share with you a woman who has invested a lot in herself and it truly paid off. This is Deborah Flynn. Deborah, I watched win her pageant only just a short time ago. She won from stage. This woman won $10,000. She was on stage competing against over 40 people. I mean, there, there were so many people in this pageant. This isn't like it was like a six person pageant, you know, this woman won $10,000. For online voting, she won the title of Ms. International. This is for online voting. How many people have online voting? I mean, there are so many pageants that include online voting. They sometimes call it the People's Choice Award. She had dozens of sponsors all over the nation that helped to make it happen. So I had an opportunity to talk with her after the pageant, after she won, and was like, wow, congratulations, you won 10 grand. Like, that is just so crazy. And she was very humble, and she said, you know what? I've been working really hard. I have had sponsors all over the U.S. She invested time. She invested money. And she did all of that up front, but she won it back and then some. 
And she knew what she was going for. Like she knew what her strengths was. She knew that she was able to use her connections, to use her strengths and her skills. She knew if she could manage this properly, she would be able to reach a huge audience and she'd be a shoe in. It would be then really easy for her to win this, you know, 10 grand. Can you imagine? Ugh. I just think that's such an incredible success story. And again, an amazing opportunity for sponsorships. So some of the sponsors that I can share with you that could be potential sponsors and partners, these are some that my clients have worked with. Dad's Dog Food, which is local to Pennsylvania, um, sponsoring girls for work that they have a similar mission on. Crayola Crayons, which is also in Pennsylvania. And then Home Depot. I mean, can you imagine working with the Home Depot? Imagine them sending out one email just to their employees saying, hey, we've got this contestant competing, vote for her. You know, oh, that would be an incredible opportunity. So. So all of this is an opportunity for you as well. So I want to hear from you. Are you ready to get some high paying pageant sponsors? Now it's your turn. And the benefits of pageant sponsors go far beyond, of course, even just competing in the pageant. I mean, you, of course, would be able to afford the best of the best in pageant coaching, in wardrobe, makeup, everything that you need that you already know you need, by the way, you already have in your mind, like, yeah, those are the things I want. Like, I could totally do that too. The second thing that the benefits bring to you when you have sponsors is that you can develop a really powerful relationship with a partner who can help to promote you and to promote you not just during your pageant, but also beyond the pageant. So all of the things that you want to do as a title holder, think about the opportunities that you would have when you have a giant partner, you know, like a sponsor that can take you to that next level. And then finally, you can really prove your ability to get sponsors to the judges and to the pageant. That right there is a really a key because as you know, there is a reason why they put sponsors in program books. And of course it is to give just kind of to honor those sponsors because they want that. But let's be honest, that isn't that valuable, you know, a program book ad that's going to be seen by all these pageant girls. If your dad's dog food, that's not going to make, uh, it's not going to really move the needle. You know, it's not like these are all pet owners or these are all whatever. This is a pageant, you know, so it's like a variety of different people. So unless you are a pageant related business, it's going to be really difficult to make that investment worth your while. But one of the things that is very valuable to you as the contestant is when you have sponsors featured in the program book, that is seen by the director, that is seen by the judges, that's seen by other people in the area, that's seen by other potential sponsors, you know, who are looking for spokespeople and things like that. If they see you all through that program book, that is going to say something. Now, I will say that as a judge, we try to ignore things like that. Like we try to say, oh, well, I don't want to just judge her for that. But to be honest, that really can separate a contestant from the other competition because she proves to everyone that she is able to get sponsorships and to a pageant that is like gold that is just so so valuable so i'm going to take a sip of water and then i've got some questions for you So the first question I get asked a lot is, do you need experience? And the answer is absolutely not. You do not need experience in order to make this happen. And there's a few reasons for that. First of all, because it's not really about your experience, and I'll share that with you. It isn't about that, although I can promise you, you've got experience in something that we are going to pull out, and that something is going to be the thing that makes you, you know? Do you need tons of money? No, you do not. Do you need some money? Well, yeah, probably. You know, this is a little bit of an investment, so you need something, but do you need tons? No. I'm going to show you ways that you can do this without spending a ton of money. Do you need to work hard? Yes, you really, really do. And there are ways, I mean, I'm still going to save you tons of time figuring this out yourself, but yes, you do need to work hard and you do need to um, have that mentality of like, okay, keep pressing in, keep pressing in, because the more that you do, the more success you will have. The more effort you give, the more success. Okay, so are you ready for the seven steps? Yes, of course you are. So let's dive in. <clears throat> How to get high paying pageant sponsors in seven steps. Now, this next slide, I do not want to overwhelm you. I just want to share with you what the seven steps are, okay? So what I have done here is you'll see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
These are the seven steps for the pageant sponsor success formula. Now, what I what, what I did for you here is I broke these down into three different phases. Okay, so the pageant sponsor success formula is what you will have the opportunity to join at the end of this. And this is a coaching program that I offer. And it really dives into each of these. This is what we're going to be talking about today on our workshop. We're going to get the opportunity to, to kind of see what each of these phases is all about. So we are going to really dive into them. So what I want to begin with first is just the understanding that one of the biggest mistakes that women make, and this is what I, sh I share with you that we would absolutely learn. Excuse me for a minute. I'm going to take another drink of water. <clears throat> Just want to make sure I'm ready for you girls. Okay. So the bi biggest mistake is that women often ask for money instead of offering what they're able to give. So you may have heard this quote before, ask for money, get advice, ask for advice, get money twice. I love this quote. And it's super funny when you find out who this is from. Some of you may already know who this quote is from, but it's hilarious to me. Really, the point is that when you are just running around asking people for money, like a lot of women ask for money by going to a sponsor or a potential sponsor, they knock on the door and they say, hi, I'm really interested in sponsorship. I'm going to be competing in this pageant and I'm a member of the local community. I'm really active involved. Would you be willing to give me some money? I'll take anything, maybe $50 that you have, maybe $100, anything would help. And then the sponsor is like, what? Who are you again? Like, how are you going to help my business? What am I sponsoring exactly? What am I going to get out of this? Right? They, they're like, okay. So then the biggest thing you can offer them is like, I'm going to stick your business name in my pageant program book. And they're like, okay, but I'm a dentist. So how's that helpful? You know? Uh, or you say like, I can, if you want to spend $500 then I'll give you an ad in the program book. And then they're like, okay, well, how many people are at the pageant? And you're like, well, I don't really know. And they're like, well, in the past, like how have those advertisements worked for other businesses? And you're like, well, I don't really know. I mean, they would, their money would go a lot further spending $500 on a TV, a local TV ad. They could get the same thing, right? So they're not thinking like, oh, that's excellent advertising. Like it's not, that's horrific, right? So now they're thinking about you as a charity. So like, mm, okay, well maybe I could give you money as a charitable donation and then I could write it off. But so then they're like, okay, here's 50 bucks. And then they're like, they forget about you. You know what I mean? Like that's typically how this goes. And that is the biggest mistake. So of course, in this workshop, we're going to learn how not to do that. So, but first I want to share with you who said this quote, maybe some of you got that ask for money, get advice, ask for advice, get money twice. Pitbull, Pitbull. I mean, Pitbull is hilarious. I love this image of him because if you remember Pitbull years and years ago, his brand was nothing like this, but now I, I was at a concert of his recently in Las Vegas in the fall here. And when he performed, he thanked so many people that gave him the advice that he needed to take his business, his performance, his entertaining to the next level. I mean, he talked about getting coaching for putting together a record. Like he said, oh, I don't even know how to put together a record, but I've got the best coach in town. And it was little John actually who coached him to get him to be able to put a record together because he's been featured on so many different songs, but he was never actually put a record together. So it was awesome just how he realized that when you get advice, you're able to apply that advice to learn how to get money. So it's not about just asking for the money, right? And say, oh, okay, here, I'm going to do this. No, it's like really learning what is it you need to do and how are you going to put that money, use it in the best way, you know? So I just think that that's awesome, you know, and he also gave props to, um, to the advice that he got. He said that someone advised him to get dancers and to get a band for a show prior. He was just performing solo. And so he was getting advice again from coaching that said, you know, you need to get dancers. Here's how to go about it. You know, here's what you need to do. And his dancers were phenomenal. You know, they danced the whole time. I couldn't believe it. You know, wardrobe changes. I mean, it was, it really made the show spectacular. So I just love this quote and it comes um, uh, to me sort of as a surprise from Pitbull, but I just completely relate to it. So, so let's dive into phase one, which is what can I offer? So when you first are thinking about getting a pageant sponsor, you really need to understand what is it that you bring to the table? So what can you offer? Now, the first part about this is understanding your strengths. So there are four areas of strengths that we want to look at. 
The first is your strength of knowledge, education and training. Then your attitude, so that's how you react to situations. Your talents, so these are your natural abilities. And then your skills, which are special training that you've received to de really develop things. So I want to dive into each of these. The first is knowledge. Okay, so these are the strengths that you've learned through formal study or self-study. Okay, so even if it's something that you just Googled or you practiced the guitar until you learned the guitar, you know. So I have a, list, a short list here of biology, editing music, writing for newsprint, maybe you different, know different modeling poses or karate, you know. So I have a whole list for those of you who are a part of our pageant sponsor success formula. There's a huge list I have of these. But for right now, I want you to just brainstorm and write on your notepad, what are the things that you have gotten through formal education or through self-study? Okay, so think about things like, um, you know, like if you have a degree, if you've got a master's degree, if you've got a bachelor's degree, or even if you've gone to like a cosmetology school, that would count for all of this stuff. So think about those things. An amazing example is, and I put karate in here because if you, if any of you know the Miss USA 2014, I believe it was, Nia Sanchez, she was a Taekwondo expert, I guess. And she had always done Taekwondo for many years. And during her reign, she was able to build up her brand as a Taekwondo performer and, uh, and expert and she was able to get a sponsor and i do not recall the name of the actual company that sponsored her right now but she is still partnering them with them now even after her title so now she did it with her title which of course it will be easier but i'm going to teach you how to do it even without your title okay so if you've got your list we're going to move on to the next thing now this is attitude and these are strengths related to how you handle sticky situations. So emotional reactions that help overcome problems and create solutions. So in the pageant sponsor success formula, I've got a workbook on how you actually come to these. But just take a moment. We don't have tons of time to get into that. So just take a moment right now to think, how do you respond to sticky situations? Like, what do you do to overcome them? Do you have a certain phrase, a mantra that you always say? Is there just an attitude that you bring up, a time that you remember just staying positive? Or what is it that you do on a regular basis, attitude-wise, emotionally, that keeps you going? While you write that down, I'm going to take a sip of water. The next one is your talent. So these are the strengths that come to you naturally. So maybe you are just naturally attractive or creative. Maybe you're easygoing, mature, loyal, friendly, persistent, sensitive, very trusting of others, organized or witty. This is a short list. I have a huge list of talents, but it's it's usually something that can come. I mean, when it comes to you naturally, this is the stuff that's just like you do on a regular basis. Okay, this is the easy stuff. So things that you're like, ah, yeah, that's pretty easy. Like this is easy. This is easy. It might be difficult for you to see them because when it comes to you naturally, you probably think it comes to everybody naturally. Uh, so really think hard. Write down some of your talents. What are the things that are like hard for everybody else, but super easy for you? And then the final one is your skills. So these are the things that you really, really had to develop. Like you had to be trained in these. These could be soft skills like problem solving, communication, self-control, humor, teamwork. They also could be hard skills. So things like teaching. If you learned how to teach people, there's a beginning, a middle, and an end to teaching. If you are a fashion designer, there are skills related to that. If there are specific skills in reading even, you know, like simply just that. So think about your hard and soft skills that you had to put a lot of effort into developing. Leadership is an awesome one. Uh, my boyfriend right now is going through a leadership course where he's actually getting coaching. He's got am amazing leadership skills already. He runs a huge company and is doing just absolutely awesome with it. And he's still getting coaching on leadership because you, know, you can always develop more and more and more. So that's something that he is really excited about as well. So this is a skill that you've got to develop. So write down your skills. What have you developed? So you should have this big list now of your knowledge, your attitudes, your talents, and your skills. So again, I say that in the pageant success formula, we are going to really dive deep into these. Uh, we don't have tons of time for it right now, but hopefully you've got a little list growing already. 
So then the second step is you want to think about your personal brand. Now, this boils down to your values, your dreams and your goals, and your style and the image that other people see. So there are, I mean, this, just this topic alone, I could spend an hour talking about. So I don't want to waste your time spending a whole hour on this right this second, because I really want to take time to get to all of the, I want to get through each of these today. So, uh, but just so you know, the pageant sponsor success formula, we dive in, we do spend the time that is needed for this. But right now, just think about how do people see you? Like, what's your brand? What do, what do other people see when they go to your Facebook page or when they hear you speaking, when they meet you for the first time? How would they describe you? That's your brand. So I want to share with you as an example, I'll give you a little bit about my personal brand. So when I think about my strengths, my brand, like what am I bringing to the table? What am I able to offer this potential sponsor? So at the time that this was happening for me, I was a spokesperson for the International Sports Sciences Association. They help people become personal trainers. And so this is an image here that they used of me in their advertising. And here I'm doing like a nice little yoga pose there. And this was seen all over the internet. I Actually, it showed up for me and I was like, what is that? There's my image right there. So I took a screenshot of it because I was like, how cool, I'm actually on their advertising, you know? So really an awesome opportunity to be seen right there. Then I was able to, through the positions I was working at at the time, I found a client who worked for OK Magazine. This is in Los Angeles at a very posh um, fitness studio. And so we worked together. I was able to write several videos and articles for OK Magazine online. And so I was featured in all of these things. Um, you can see that that I mean, that took a lot of work to kind of come together and I wasn't getting paid for it. But it was an awesome opportunity to really create my brand. So I mentioned hard work is important. Um, here is an image of me on a video with Pop Sugar. Pop Sugar is a fitness, um, actually Pop Sugar is like an entertainment company and they have a fitness channel. So a dear friend of mine, Anna here, was able to connect with me to get me as an extra on these shows. And so I, I filmed many different fitness videos with her. And so I was really able to build my brand in that way. I was then featured on Shine Theory as an influential woman. I was nominated in 2013. And uh, so I was featured, really, this image is on the homepage of the Th Shine Theory website. And so an amazing opportunity there that came from a friend of mine who knew I was in pageantry, who knew I supported women, who knew I was in the fitness industry, and I was all about just beauty and shining from the inside out. And so had that opportunity to be featured here. And then this is a fun picture. I just love this because I'm a little bit larger there than Mario Lopez and Jessica Biel. <laughs> and so I love that my face is the one that stands out on the screenshot, you know, and then I think in the lower left-hand corner is Justin Bieber. There's Wendy Williams. All of the photos I am larger than. And I just think it's so interesting because this is the kind of stuff that I was able to collect when I pitched my brand to the sponsor to say, look, here's what I'm able to offer you. Here's my brand. So my strengths what I described to my sponsor was on camera talent. I was a Los Angeles fitness professional. I was, a, I had celebrity exposure and celebrity clientele that I was working with at the time, like um, celebrities like Oliver Hudson and Josh Dumal. And I also understood online marketing strategies. And that is what helped me with the OK Magazine. So my brand was celebrity fitness on camera and online. And that is really what I showed up as what I can offer my sponsor. Now, you might be thinking right now, like, oh, boy, well, I don't have a brand like that. Like, wow, that's Los Angeles. I'm from a small town. Or you might be saying, like, goodness, all of those celebrity connections, of course, that would help. But I don't have anything like that. Let me tell you that when you join the pageant sponsor success formula, we are going to dive specifically into you you have things too. I mean, there is so much more going on with my life. These aren't the only things, but I was able to bring these things out and position myself to really focus on these things. And we're going to do the exact same thing for you. So do not stress. You've got it. And I know you already have it in you. This is what I do with women all the time, all day long. This is my job. So I know for sure you've got it and we're going to bring it out. Let me take a sip of water and jump to phase two. So phase two is all about what do we want? And I say we because this is where the partnership comes in. 
So step three, and this is the first part of this, is we got to figure out a legacy project for you. A legacy project is something that requires you in order to get it started. And it's also something that must exist beyond your year. When you create something like this, a project or a product that exists beyond you, this is like gold to a sponsor because they see you as beneficial. This is bigger than just, oh, I'm competing in a pageant. And then they're like, okay, well, whoop do doo once the pageant's over, then what, you know? But when you create a legacy project that lasts far beyond you, this is what sponsors are really, really interested in. So my legacy project at this time was called Get a Better Body. And what I did was I did keyword research through Google uh, because I mentioned that online is really a great place for me. I do a lot of things online and I promote brands and build businesses online. And so I knew that this was something that I was able to do. So I did a keyword search about fitness. What are people typing in when they want to get fit? Like what are, what are people who know nothing about fitness, you know, they're not typing in a clean and press. They're not typing in things like CrossFit or they're not typing in like how to run a 5K. Like these are people who do not have access to fitness. What can, what are they typing in? And I found they were typing in how to get a better body. So I named my legacy project. I named the whole brand Get a Better Body. Then I used my experience as a professional certified personal trainer and I designed an at-home fitness program that was an eight week program and the eight weeks specifically because as a fitness professional, I know that, that we train in eight week cycles. So I did an eight week cycled fitness program that was progressive, that used, that worked all the major muscle groups and you could do it straight from home. I taught form and I mean, it is like an awesome program. So I designed this program, then I filmed it, I edited it all myself, <clears throat> I uploaded it. I synced all of those fitness videos. So I put them all together in one place where people could access them very easily. They can sign up for free. It's all online and it's accessible because since it's free, this isn't for people who need to pay hundreds of dollars to join a gym. You don't have to buy all fancy equipment. You know, all of this stuff is super, super accessible. All you need is to be able to watch it online, you know? So that was the vision that I had for my legacy project. So it turns out to be get a better body. It's getabetterbody.info information on how to get a better body. And you can still see this today. I had 100 members sign up before the pageant even started. And for me, remember that my goal was to create a huge impact. So already, this is before the pageant. I mean, this is before even like getting the sponsor. This is before even deciding about the pageant. I mean, all this stuff is just like, I wanted to make an impact. So I'm like, this is what I'm going to do. So I created all this stuff based on the things that I had already done in my past, you know? So get a better body. Uh, the next step that you need to do is you got to figure out what your mission statement is. I'm going to share with you what my mission statement is for get a better body for my legacy project. You got to figure out what are you trying to achieve? And then you've got to find some other people who are on the same mission because those people will become your future sponsors. You want to partner with people who are on the same mission as you. Now, in the pageant sponsor success formula, I'm going to give you an outline to help you create your mission statement. So this is mine. My better body mission statement is to provide free and accessible fitness online video program to thousands of international followers. And ultimately, I wanted to have a healthier, happier place for everyone. So this is sort of the mission I was really on. So now after you create your mission statement, which I'll help you create in the pageant sponsor success formula, then you want to find other people, big brands who match yours. So I found somebody who was on my same mission. This is their mission statement that I found on their website. This is from Fidios. I love that they say a lot of things just like me. Put the content that you want right at your fingertips as quickly and easily as possible. And remember, that was my whole thing is I wanted accessibility, quick and easy. I was doing, they say, watch videos of others. That's what I was creating to create fitness partnerships, fitness pals, to find fitness or health professionals and businesses in your area. So this was like, wow. I mean, you would have thought that I wrote my mission statement after I saw theirs, you know, because it was so in line for me. I was like, wow. Wow. They are like the perfect pageant sponsor because our missions are like exactly the same. So the next step that you do, now this enters into phase three, which is how can I contribute? 
Okay, I hope you're taking lots of notes. I'm gonna take a sip of water while you do. So you need to create a proposal. This is step number five. You want to figure out once you find the companies, which and don't stress about finding the companies. I have lots of ways to find them. Like some, I mean, some key ways are you first want to look through your contacts to find these types of sponsors. You want to search through your contacts to figure out if there any is anyone else on the same mission. And then there's ways to reach out to them. And then you want to figure out, okay, if there is no one in my contact or if none of them are buying, then how do I find others? And the first, the easiest way to do it is a Google search. I mean, I can share with you lots of other ways, but that is the quickest way is to search, just search a lot of the things from your mission, mission statement, those phrases, search those in Google, and you will find others who have mission statements that are very similar. So once you do, now you gotta do research to figure out what is it that that company needs. So there are ways to research these companies online to figure out how long have they been in existence, what are they after right now. You can find, sometimes you can find, um, goal statements for them from their company for the new year and stuff. So you want to figure out what is it that they really need. Then look at what can you offer them? That's the first step. It's like, okay, if they need this and this and this, what am I able to do? So now you go back to your strengths list and you say, what can I offer them based on my experience, based on my knowledge? Then you say, what do I need? This is where your budgeting comes in handy. Okay. So I'll give you that budget in the pageant sponsor success formula. Like what specifically do you need to know about pageants? Like, what is it going to add up to, you know, and what do you need for that? So you've got your list. Then what can they offer you? So now you look at their strengths. What, what knowledge do they have? What access do they have? What things do they have their hands in? What companies are the other companies do they partner with? What other things are they professional organizations that they're a part of, you know? So what can they offer you? It might even be financial. And that's what we're really after here, you know? So if they're able to offer you something financially, then you put together your proposal. So a word of caution here about your proposal is you only want to offer the things that belong to you. Okay, so you can't be offering things that don't belong to you. And you cannot promise what you cannot deliver. So an example of this is I have seen people attempt to say, well, maybe we could put your name on the pageant website. And that's awesome. And that would be great if you could do that. But if that doesn't belong to you, then you cannot promise that. So don't make promises on things that you can't deliver. You know, you really want to be authentic, especially even after your pageant. Like here's a sticky situation is that when you win a pageant, your pageant sponsor, it would be awesome if you could bring them with you. But sometimes you might be limited by the pageant itself because they might say, well, we already have a fitness sponsor. We can't bring on another fitness sponsor because it's a conflict of interest. Okay. That happens a lot with wardrobe sponsors. If you've got a local wardrobe sponsor and the pageant already has a state sponsor, it's sometimes hard to bring them along with you. So don't promise that you could say that you want to work toward that and that you'll, you'll be an advocate for them at the state level, but you cannot promise that. So be very cautious what you are actually proposing. Okay. So personally for me, my proposal looked somewhat like this and I can share with you in the pageant sponsored success formula. I'll share with you exactly what my proposal looked like, but essentially it was they needed more users in metro areas and they needed more videos. Well, I was able to offer marketing to professional fitness people in the Los Angeles area and video creation. What I needed based on the budget I created, based on what I was willing to put in and what I needed from sponsors was I needed $3,000. And guess what? They were able to offer $3,000. So what a hit. What this does for us, for us, for both of us, is now together, we are able to increase our impact. I mean, like far beyond what we could have done is just their company and me. Now together, we can do so much more. Plus, it decreased the financial pressure that I was experiencing. So now with that financial pressure decreased, I was like ready to go all in. I mean, I am like, killing it. I'm going to all these events. I'm like overdoing it. I really wanted to create a win win because they were on the same mission as me. Like I had this huge mission. I really wanted to promote this and I knew that they could help me promote my mission. So now we've got this synergy going back and forth. It is truly a win win. So after you create this proposal, you present 
the proposal. You have an understanding of all these things. We're going to be able to increase impact. We're going to decrease the financial pressure on me and the pressure of them on what they need, like the marketing and video creation. They're, they're losing that pressure as well, which is awesome. We're creating a win-win time to negotiate. So negotiations are a part of every deal. Sometimes they're easier to do. For me, this was over breakfast with my sponsor. We negotiated this. We actually came up with the whole idea together and I presented the proposal. Here's what I think that we need. And then we negotiated it right there over breakfast. So I said, okay, well, what can you offer? Maybe we negotiate the money or the gift that they are giving, which we did slightly. We actually offer, we uh, negotiated the timeline. So this is the timeline and how it was given. That's what we negotiated. And I'm willing to share those things with you too in more detail in the program. And then you also can adjust what you're offering. And that was also negotiated for me was we adjusted what am I bringing to the table? Like, like what am I offering that is a little bit different? So we were able to negotiate that as well. We came with that win-win. And then as I mentioned to you, I always give more than they pay for. So for those of you who are in my coaching program, you know that I always give you more than you pay for. And that is something that I believe builds the relationship long term. And when I have a relationship that is built over the long term, the impact is huge. So you always want to over deliver. And I've got a huge list of how you can do this. Um, the one that is like the easiest to do is through social media because that social proof is really valuable to businesses. So when people, I love when my clients post things about, yay, Alicia helped me do this today, or thank you, Alicia, for this, you know, like that makes me feel really good. So I do that for my sponsors. When someone's sponsoring me or I'm partnering with another organization or I was given a gift by somebody, I mean, I'm always trying to give them shout outs left and right everywhere I can. I, as I was going through pageantry, one of the things I learned was always thank your sponsors. And that I know is just so valuable. And that is a huge part of over delivering. So now, ladies, you have heard the seven steps of how you can get pageant sponsors. It is now time for you to know your skills, to discover your mission, and then to finally partner with major, major high paying sponsors. It is time for you to win a pageant. I hope you agree. Now, here is your choice. I mentioned that you have a decision to make. And so you can do this all yourself. I've given you everything that you need to put this into action. For you go-getters that are just ready to go for it and dive in, go for it. You can do it yourself. Or you could hire me to do it with you. And I promise you it's going to be way easier that way, okay? Now, at the beginning of this, I mentioned that I wanted to share with you how you can join the pageant sponsor success formula. And today, I wanna give you a really special offer, okay? I'm about to blow you out of water. I always give more than you pay for, so get ready for this. First, the pageant sponsor success formula, I wanna share with you a little bit about what that is. Like, what is it, what do you get? First of all, you will get three coaching sessions. So these will be very similar to this, but we're going to break out each one of those phases and I'm going to help you dive into those so that you're not feeling like, wow, we just breezed through that. You know, you're actually going to get access to deep coaching on all of those so that it's very clear. It's very easy and it's very step by step for you to figure out how to do that. For each of those, you're also going to get fast action homework guide sheets. So I don't want you to just feel like you have to take notes all on your own. I actually have guides that are going to help you. Okay, do this first, do this next, do this. Next. This is going to be helpful for you because I want you to be able to do this in a week, just like I did. I want you to have everything together in a week. So that is my goal for you is to just wham, bam, these fast action homework guide sheets are going to get you efficiently doing this. I shared with you some of the other things I'm going to give you, like my sponsor proposal template so that you can write a win-win proposal to give to your potential sponsors. And then also, I'm going to throw in this bonus coaching session for you at the end, which is how you can have sponsors help you actually win the pageant. And I touched on that a little bit, but there's definitely a way to massage that relationship so that you can encourage them to participate in your People's Choice Awards and to encourage them to participate in attending the pageant and things like that. So you're going to get that bonus coaching of how to actually work with those sponsors. And what this is all about, again, is you're trying to increase your impact, you're decreasing that financial pressure on yourself, and you're creating a win-win. 
So by the end of this coaching program, you're going to have identified your strengths and your skills. So you're going to really know what you can offer. And we're going to get it to real specific so that you've got an actual game plan to walk in with. You will have written your pageant mission statement. I've got some templates for you there too. And I'm going to teach you how to go about that and how to really dive in. Like what is it you really want out of this? You're going to discover some large brands to bring on as your partners. And I've got some specific ways in that training. I'll give you some specific ways on how you can reach out to those brands, like how to even find them. We're going to create a win-win sponsor proposal offer. You are going to create that. You're going to have it by the end of this. And this is all a playbook that you can just rinse and repeat. Like you can just do this over and over and over, okay? So what you're getting again, you're getting the three coaching sessions, okay? This is valued at $750. You're gonna get the step-by-step -step explanations to teach you how to do it the right way the first time and every single time, okay? So these coaching sessions are gonna help you through every single time you do this. You're also gonna get those fast action guide sheets. This is a $200 value because it's gonna get you from point A to point B lickety split, okay? My goal is to get you fast. Remember, we're trying to do this in just a week. I'm trying to get you all this information that you can. You're also gonna get the sponsor proposal template. That's a $100 value. Really, that's more like a $3,000 value because that's what I got. This is the sponsor template that I used to get my $3,000 sponsor, okay? So if you're not sure what to say, don't worry. I've got your back. Simple template to get a win-win offer. Then this bonus coaching session of how sponsors can help you win. And I'm going to teach you what you need to do to get these sponsors on board for you. Okay, so when you join me for this program, you're going to get the three coaching sessions. That's $450 total value, the fast action homework guide sheets, sponsor proposal templates, the bonus training. All of this together is a $900 value. But wait, there's more. There's always more because I always give you more than you pay for. I want to give this to you for only $197 dollars okay my goal is i really just want to help you get high paying pageant sponsors because my ultimate goal is you i told with you my, my what my mission is i want to see you soar i want you to be awesome i want you to be flying high above everybody else and i want that for everybody i mean if every single one of the pageant women i've ever worked with every single girl who competes could have a unique brand who has an awesome awesome legacy project that is just like out there kicking butt with awesome high level high paying pageant sponsors like think how awesome this world would be that is a world i want to live in that is a healthier happier world that is what i want ultimately okay so you have a decision to make. I want you to go get your credit card right now, wherever it may be, and make a decision. Is this program something that you want or not? Are you ready to get high paying pageant sponsors or not? This is the moment where I was that when I told you, you know, I made this decision, like, do I just want to give up on pageants? Am I ready to just keep cutting costs here and there? Or am I ready to finally take control get the advice that I need to get money twice, ladies, this is such an important moment for you. Like th this is the opportunity that you have to change everything that you've competed in pageants before. I want this for you so badly. I want to teach you exactly what you need and skills that you can use even outside of pageantry for a super low price. And, and honestly, if you're not going to do it right now, when would you do this? Like, is there ever a better time? Probably not. You have this opportunity in front of you right now to take action. So hopefully you've got your credit card in hand. I am getting prepared to launch this offer for you. So in just a few moments, you're going to have this opportunity to take hold. So in three, two, one, ladies, take action. This is your opportunity to finally step in to the knowledge that you need to get high paying pageant sponsors so that you can finally perform at the level you want to perform at so that you can finally have partners, people that are really, really wanting to support you, people that are thanking you for being a part of their program, for people that are thanking you for helping them explore this mission. And so if you have more questions, please visit us. Um, shoot me an email at support at winapageant.com and we'll get your questions answered or give us a ring um, and just mention the 
pageant sponsor success formula. I am super excited to get you all set up with your legacy project and things like that. This is going to be such an exciting program. So thank you ladies for joining us and I can't wait to see you in the program. Talk to you soon.